on those stumps over there? Call ice bow. technique. Does it work? If do right, you can defense. Hey guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. I've got the number one player in the world right now, Carnage, the Ice Bow God. Today's going to be an amazing video, but first, a quick word from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by CATS. Build your vehicle in, smash your opponents. That's right, fight against real players around the world using your custom built vehicles. And today I'm excited to share the news of the All Star event with you guys, which is a series of short term competitions held bi weekly. They'll temporarily be replacing Ultimate League. Features random modifiers that completely change the conditions of a fight. So win fights, maximize your rating, and dominate the leaderboard. Download CATS today. All right, guys, going inside the first match here, we're going to do something a little bit different in today's video. Let me know in the comments below if you like it, if you don't like it. Uh, I just as always, I re really value your feedback, guys. So we're going to go kind of play by play against two popular meta decks in against some of the other world's best players. And then after that, what I want to do is while I turn on an, an awesome replay against Torin playing an off meta deck, I asked Carnage to break down against the top five meta decks right now what his overall strategy is to win those matchups. Because, like the intro said, shout out to Mr. Miyagi and Karate Kid. Uh, if you play this deck right, you shouldn't be losing that often, if ever. You can always draw out with Expo decks. That's why they make an amazing option for the upcoming CRL 20 win challenge. I believe that kicks off in three or four days on the 20. 21st. So Ice Bow could be a deck, even if you're not traditionally an Expo user, that you might want to play because you can mitigate those losses simply by drawing out matches that are difficult. So we're going to talk about those specific matchups and how to handle them uh, in maybe the third replay here. But let's first focus on Bruni Ross here from Ross Gaming, our first matchup of this video, playing a very popular Ram Rider Mega Knight deck. I shared this deck maybe a month ago, but man, it has taken off since then. It's, it's really, really good right now. I definitely say this is one of the top decks that you will be facing not only in ladder, but obviously in the 20 win challenge. This this deck, by the way, is really good on ladder as well. I don't want to, you know, put it in that box as just being good in the 20 win challenge. So the defensive expo, we did take some damage early on. One thing you'll notice about Carnage, as you notice while I was kind of rambling at the beginning of this replay, is that he'll use that defensive rocket when he needs to, and he has a really good keen sense of, okay, I'm going to need to rocket here. But, you know, we're going into double elixir time. He sets up the expo opposite lane, even though the Mega Knight was in hand from the opponent. So let's see how he's going to handle this Mega Knight here. He just does such a great job of using all his cards and never, never... Never not having a reason, forgive the double negative, but never not having a reason while he's playing a specific card here. So he's going to be going opposite lane from this matchup, obviously. He doesn't want to go same lane as the tower they have a lot of damage on. And the reason he played, now it's pretty clear to you guys, the reason he played that very first expo there, knowing the Mega Knight was in hand, is he knew he could outcycle that Mega Knight. And that's what it comes down to with an expo, with any expo deck. Sometimes a lot of you guys ask me, well, how do I handle Giant? How do I handle Golem? How do I handle P.E.K.K.A., Mega Knight, whatever? And a lot of the times that's the answer. Look at this defense here, guys. Can we just take a look at this defense. He is cutting this Mega Knight everywhere. That was an absolutely superb defensive sequence there by Carnage. Just unbelievable. But yeah, he's able to, again, outcycle the Mega Knight, forcing a very quick Barbarian Barrel. You know, I spoke too soon. He didn't outcycle the Mega Knight, but it was, it was like a half a second, right? So he goes in with another Expo, and he's cycling. He's cycling all his cards again in back here. He's able to defend very easily. You have the Skeletons down. Skeletons going to distract that final minion. And then Kite opposite lane. He has the Ice Golem ready for the Lumberjack and, of course, the uh, Ram Rider push. But, hey, he's not going to deal with that push. He doesn't want any of that going to use his rocket there and again he had his rocket a nice positive elixir trade takes care of the lumberjack and the ram rider. that's a nine for six trade thank you very much he also used the ice golem though so then he goes with the defensive expo he baits out the opponents uh their poison there excuse me what spell was that he baits out the poison there and now we have an inferno dragon coming down the left lane the opponent does have the damage advantage as we're about uh 50 seconds into sudden death overtime here and here we go it's going to be a ram rider in the back for the opponent and he's 
gonna go with another defensive expo opposite lane. Check this out, guys. Another poison comes down from the opponent. We're just gonna go ahead and log and rely on that Mega Minion to finish off that Battle Ram before she gets a hit on the right tower. And we're gonna start cycling in the back again. Notice these defensive expos all the way to the side so they can't poison our weak tower. Now our weak tower is the left one, so we're gonna go right with the defensive expo. And when do you play the defensive expo like that? Why is he playing the defensive expo like that? Might be a question that some of you are asking. Well, number one is, it's a great position to play that expo so you can avoid the spell damage on your weak side tower, and it can also allow you a very robust defensive option protecting both lanes because of the wide uh, radius of it, while your opponent still has their big counter in hand, such as this case with the Mega Knight. Another nice rocket there. Now there's going to be a uh, Skeleton's place. We have Ice Golem in hand. Ice Golem comes down just at the last second. Beautiful support on this expo, even though the expo only has about 15% health left. Look at all the damage it's going to get. It's going to put that tower within two rocket range, and this match is almost over at this point. That's all that Carnage needs. Look, at this is over five minutes into this match, guys, but the discipline, the patience of Carnage, you can just, hopefully it translates to you guys on the other end of the devices that you're watching from. Because I'm just, I'm really, and you're going to become to really appreciate this as we go on throughout the rest of the replays here, guys. Because against some really difficult matchups, I think that you can take away a lot of just the, the poise that Carnage has through these matchups. And hopefully that will translate into your own gameplay as well. So a nice victory there. Let's go ahead and hop into the next match against Don Palestina. I'm sure you recognize his name from the top of the leaderboards every season. Now he's playing a very interesting mortar deck have you guys seen this mortar deck i wanted to be sure i've wanted to share a bomb tower deck with you guys for a while now uh i've shared one uh i think it was one of the uh the royal hog bomb tower decks but i want to share another one and i have a guest hopefully lined up to do that pretty soon it's not going to be this version though have you seen this going around it's the mortar rascals rocket as you just saw with the bomb tower so this is a challenging matchup because he has rascals he has obviously mortar he has Bomb Tower, so he has a few options, and Rocket, right? He has a few options in terms of defensive uh, options for our Expo. So how are we going to get around that if we're Carnage? Well, Carnage never panics, and he always takes things slow. He always wants to see what cards the opponent is playing. He wants to assess the opponent's deck, figure out every single option that he has as we progress through these matches. So he's going to get a few shots on that Mortar with the Ice Wizard, and then he's going to play the Mega Minion there. And you can see, he's just being very patient. He didn't use the Log right away. He's going to let the Mega Minion finish things off, and then opt to play that Expo instead. So the Rocket comes down again from the opponent, but we can cycle back to another Expo here, especially in double elixir time which we're not there yet to avoid that rocket so don palestine is going to need at least two options for our expo bad news for us he has quite a bit of options right so it's going to be an interesting match and another one that you can expect being an ice bow player a lot of your matches are going to be going into overtime the majority of your matches are probably going to be going into overtime unless your opponent just makes silly mistakes. So you really have to have the virtue of patience when you're playing any Expo deck, specifically Ice Bow. So, and, and another thing that you guys will notice here is that we, we rocket cycle, sure, we rock, rocket cycle in these matchups, but we don't, we're not super, super aggressive with our offensive rockets. Usually Carnage waits until he actually has enough damage to get two rockets off. It's not like we're starting to rocket cycle at 2,000 damage just because the opponent has a lot of counters. Like this matchup, right? You could easily, I'm sure some players would look at this matchup and approach it like, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to break through Bomb Tower, Rascals, Rocket, and uh, in Mortar, so I might as well just start playing defense and rocket cycling. No, Carnage still tries to play offense with his Expo because as you saw in the previous match, even a very temporary lock from the Expo onto the Princess Tower can prove to be very lucrative from the Ice Bow player's standpoint. So again here, the Expo is down and this is looking good all of a sudden. They had Rascals, but we had Log ready for him. We catch that Miner with the Skeletons. Snowball comes down. As soon as this Archer's down, well, no, it's another Rascals down. <laughs> but 
we have Expo already back in hand here, guys. He had to use a lot of Elixir, Don Palestina, that is. He had to use a lot of Elixir, so we're ready again with the Expo. Now, granted, this time he has Rocket, but Don Palestina opts not to use the Rocket in this circumstance. Instead, he's going to rely on the Bomb Tower. So again here, we're trying to do everything we can to stop these this onslaught of defensive bomb towers and, and rascals. But we do get a temporary lock. And then Don Palestina uses his rocket on offense. That's why he didn't use it against our expo. He wanted to use it against our tower. That opens us up to use a rocket of our own. And that really was GG. Don Palestina maybe got a little greedy with that rocket. He opted to play defense, and he was successful using the bomb tower there, even though we get a very, very small lock. But now all we need again is just two rockets to finish things off. From Carnage's perspective, he puts that it puts him quite a ways ahead of the eight ball here against Don Palestina. So they're gonna trade rockets again here. Don knows that he needs something to make something happen here. Snowball comes down. We use a log defensively. Smart log, all we have to do, I think two cards away, three cards away from our rocket. There it is. Ice golem down, ice uh, wizard down, and rockets in hand. And that's gonna be GG there, guys. And you can see again the pay over a minute a minute and eight seconds into overtime here he pulls out the victory so I'm gonna put on the replay against Torin man one of my favorite players out there is Torin I gotta get him back on Torin if you're watching I need to get you back on man I just love this deck we're gonna be watching it from Torin's perspective here at the bottom of your screen that's right it's the giant skeleton balloon deck in case you missed this deck guys I uploaded it maybe two three weeks ago with Torin Man, what an insane video. I've mentioned this a few times since I've uploaded it, but it was one of those videos that I was just so happy with when it came out. There's like so many, when you do live matches, it's always a crapshoot. How many like sick plays are you going to see? How many great opponents are you going to go against? How many tough matchups are you going to go against? And well, we had it all in that video. So I was really happy with it. I'll link it in case you guys are curious in case you missed it. So let me go ahead and go over the matchups. And what I'm going to do is if you guys want kind of a text guide without having to search in the timestamps of when I talk about all these matchups, I'm going to in uh, include all of the text that Carnage sent me in the video description for you guys. How to handle kind of a blueprint a short blueprint on how to handle all the popular meta decks and then the last replay that I'll show you guys in today's video will be against a, a marathon of a match but a really really awesome match to watch if you want a blueprint against Royal Giant Lightning which is a really difficult matchup uh, we'll show that as the last replay so let's start with Royal Giant. There's really two strategies, according to Carnage, to employ against Royal Giant. Number one is wait for them to make mistakes and defend first with minimal elixir and then try to outcycle the Royal Giant. And that's obviously something that you're going to be doing in every Royal Giant matchup. Now, there's a more aggressive strategy, doing something that Carnage himself does not employ, does not do in his matches, but it's something that he says is still viable. It can still work for players, right? And that is if your opponent plays the Royal Giant in the back. If your opponent plays Royal Giant in the back, you can go ahead and rocket the tower immediately after they play the Royal Giant, assuming that you're even an elixir. And then you you should be able to defend just fine against that Royal Giant with your with your Expo, with your Ice Wizard. And even if they cycle to another Royal Giant, you should be you should be able, to, according to Carnage, to defend that one as well. So it's kind of a more aggressive technique on how to handle that matchup. The other one we have is versus Golem. Versus Golem. Carnage says it's paramount to play super aggressive at the start. When they drop the golem, you drop a defensive expo opposite lane, and then what you do is after you defend, then you drop your offensive expo in the opposite lane. So it's a little bit contrary to what a lot of people do. A lot of people will just drop the offensive expo right away. Carnage doesn't like that. He likes dropping the defensive expo when they drop the golem, and then defending, and then cycling to another expo. As soon as you're done defending, as soon as that golem's dead, on offense, on the opposite lane, if you know what I'm saying, and then he's able, the, the opponent will not have enough elixir for another golem, even if they're able to cycle back to him in that circumstance. So then uh, the other one is always try to nato the golem to the king tower in that matchup. It's something that's very important. Uh, when you drop the, what else did he say? When you drop the golem, okay, we covered everything against golem. Uh, NATO golem to king tower. And there you go, Carnage again with the victory there last second with that final rocket. And then, what about versus Giant? A few of you have asked me to ask Carnage about Giant, so I made sure I did. And he said, you always have to go opposite lane no matter what. So even if your opponent switches lanes when they're playing a Giant match, 
you want to switch right back to them, right? Because if they're switching lanes, it's because they know that they want to go same lane as you. You do not want to go same lane, no matter the circumstance. So obviously, if you have the tower really low, you can rocket it down. You don't have to switch lanes in that circumstance. But, you know, early on in the game, you want to, again, really try to outcycle, defend the giant with cheap elixir, and always expo after your defense. So some basic rules for you guys. You defend, and then you expo always, even if they have giant back in hand on offense. And, of course, make sure you're going opposite lane. Number four, against Lava Hound Clone. According to Karnge, the easiest matchup for this deck is Lava Hound Clone, which is great because Lava Hound Clone's everywhere, right? So always go same lane. Always go same lane against Lava Hound Clone. So remember, opposite uh, lane against Golem, opposite lane against Giant, always same lane against Lava Hound Clone or Lava Loon. So you go same lane. After he drops the Lava Hound, you drop the Expo same lane after the Lava Hound is dropped. And then you rely, of course, on your NATO, your Mega Minion, and your Ice Wizard on defense. Now, uh, part of the reason Lava Clone is good right now, he says, is because most decks don't include uh, Ice Wiz NATO. Ice Wiz NATO was really popular, as you guys know, for quite a while in the game. But now, not so much. This is one of the only meta decks that actually runs that. And this does a really nice job against any clone deck, especially Lava Hound clone. So that's going to be your, your, your general strategy against that matchup. Now, unfortunately, the most difficult matchup is the video that I shared yesterday, the deck that I shared yesterday with you guys. And that is the three-spell P.E.K.K.A. bridge spam with the Barbarian Barrel. The old P.E.K.K.A. bridge spam, not a problem for uh, Carnage. The one thing you have to work, look out for, according to him, is P.E.K.K.A. plus E.W.I.Z. P.E.K.K.A. plus E.W.I.Z. can be very difficult to, to defend. So you only want to drop those offensive expos, according to Carnage, when they don't have enough elixir to play their P.E.K.K.A. Because when they P.E.K.K.A. E.W.I.Z. into the same lane as your expo, it's pretty much GG if you're playing a good player, according to Carnage. Okay, but the three spell P.E.K.K.A. deck, now that's a lot trickier. He says the best strategy is to defend the entire game. And again, once you know you catch them without enough elixir, even if you have to take damage, once you catch them without enough elixir to play the P.E.K.K.A., that's when you have to go in with the Expo. So it's all about building up those positive elixir exchanges throughout the match and then trying to come at them with the Expo when they don't have the P.E.K.K.A. in hand. Be very careful again about the P.E.K.K.A. E.W.I.Z. and play very aggressive in single elixir time and try to outcycle that P.E.K.K.A. If they make the mistake of dropping their P.E.K.K.A. when you don't have an Expo on the board, well, Expo opposite lane. There you go. That's a great opportunity for you as the Expo player. So those are the top five meta decks, and those are the, the, the ways that Carnage advises you guys to handle them. Again, that will all be in the show notes below. We're already three minutes into this match here, guys, and things are, well, things are looking not so great, right? I mean, look at Danilo OP's deck. Again, Royal Giant and, Expo, or, or, and Lightning, excuse me, against Expo, but you're seeing Carnage, man. This is the match that I was watching from start to finish a few times over before I started recording for you guys. And this is the match where I'm like, dude, this guy is just, this, this match, to me, is the reason why Carnage is so good. I mean, it's a difficult matchup. You never see, like, he's panicking. You always see him, even, like, when he's selecting the cards. It's almost like he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly, even if, if, even if there's a counter after counter after counter, there's always lightning a Royal Giant in the hand of Danilo here. But he still does not panic, and he's able to prevent that Royal Giant from ever getting any serious damage onto his tower. So lightning comes down there. We are 40 seconds into sudden death overtime. Nato comes down against that Royal Giant. Danilo gives the thumbs up. He does get one hit there. 1756 remaining on the left tower, and Expo immediately cycled defensively again here for Carnage. So again, we have immediately dropped. You see that one, two, three drop? It was the Ice Golem, the Skeletons, and the Mega Minion. Boom, boom, boom. All play same time there to set up and defend or, or buy a little bit of time for the uh, Mega Minion there on defense. So that's why he used essentially the Ice Golem to tank for it. Now we have an Expo, and now Danilo's in a little bit of trouble here. He decides to Lightning, and he actually catches the Mega Minion. That was a really nice Lightning, but... Check it out. Despite the lightning, we're able to get a temporary lock onto that right tower. Now, plus the log, we get the tower down to 2226 HP remaining. 
with about halfway uh, off on the clock here in double elixir, excuse me, in sudden death time. So now we have another NATO in the Ice Wiz plate. We have a Baby Dragon, a Mega Minion, and a uh, Royal Giant coming at us on the offensive end. We have a Mega Minion played right on top of that Baby Dragon. Ice Wizard is still alive, clinging on to health. He goes down, but we're able to defend without taking any damage. And immediately, boom, the offensive expo is played. The guards just in the nick of time for the opponent. Here comes the log down. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Lightning comes down, but Lightning's not going to be enough, especially with the 4% HP buff. And there it is. We get the lock on. We have the Mega Minion ready to go. This is going to be the lock that wins Carnage the game because here with 45 seconds left he is able to cycle rockets here and defend but we you know time is is of the essence so here we go guys it's a defensive expo setup we have an ice wizard against the baby dragon again an e was played at the bridge a very aggressive play there by Danilo and here we go rocket number one 28 seconds left remaining 791 remaining we need a log two log is down 668. The rocket will finish that off. We're playing a little bit of haphazard defense here in the left lane. We need to cycle to another rocket with 15 seconds left in this match. We have rocket in hand and here it comes. Royal Giant at the bridge but rocket's down. That's gonna be GG with 9, 8, seven seconds left the log comes down and there it goes carnage with the victory against that very challenging matchup but hopefully you guys were able to take away the tools that you need to have success with this deck throughout this video whether it be the matchup breakdowns or just seeing the patience and strategy employed again by carnage throughout those other three matches on top of the torn one guys thank you so much for watching a huge shout out to carnage for making these replays and of course the tips available to you guys check out the show notes below for carnage's social media information his player stats and profile thanks to statsrail.com the cats download link thank you for sponsoring the video again to cats and of course uh, a huge shout out to bren chong my youtube partner check out his information as well guys thank you for watching and as always take care guys